Let's start with Mondi, the big uh, granddaddy of them all. Remember Mondi dual listed, so it's got MNDs and MNPs, that's Joburg and London, the PLC thing being there. But it doesn't really matter, at the end of the day you put the two together. Top performing stock on global markets, doing well locally. Timber, paper and packaging materials, including this craft paper, which is a big seller. It's like uh, the stuff they use for uh, cement packagings, and uh, some of them have also got the waxed inside. Market capitalization, 133.2 billion rand. So probably in the first division, certainly in the all Z40. Price to earnings ratio, 14.6. Dividend yield of 2.12. Okay, Chantal, your turn. Um, I must say, when it came out of Anglo, I thought this was a company that Anglo didn't want. It was going to be falling prey to the same kind of problems of oversupply. Europe didn't look so great. But it's been a star performer. Share price, why don't we put up the share chart while we look at it. So over five years, done really, really well, even including here at the end, you'd yeah. have to say. Well, I mean, for 2016, it's down year to date. Mm. Uh, we've seen the company's share price come under a little bit of pressure. Um, perhaps that rating kind of ran away from the peer group. Um, and this has just kind of brought its uh, Ford P and Ford dividend yield more in line with um, its peers. Mm. Um, but as you mentioned, I mean, when it was unbundled out of Anglos, I don't think a lot of people uh, gave this share a chance. But... Um, Focused capital allocation really does make a huge difference. Mm. And if you look in, at their return on capital employed, it's about 4% above the peer group. It's amazing. Well, how do they do that? Because the management team under David Hathorne sits in Melrose Arch here in Joburg. But these assets are like in Turkey and Russia and Czech and all over the show. Somehow or another, they manage to put good managers in place across these businesses. They've somehow mean being a like market leader and a price maker in certain markets, whereas everyone else is complaining about oversupply. They seem to be able to only buy all these like good assets. I mean, how can you buy a good asset in Russia, for example? Then the ruble falls out of bed and they invade Crimea and everyone hates them. But somehow these guys just do well. You mentioned management and the, the kind of the uh, deconstructed kind of management story where you mm. have really good managers um, in, in control of all of these assets. Yeah. And you also mentioned the ruble falling out of bed. Now, that is actually a good thing for Mondi because they, they, um, uh, they report in euros, which means that their costs are in a depreciating currency. Okay, so what you're saying is that they produce the stuff out in Russia yes. and then they supply it into to Europe where they sell it for Absolutely. the standard euro price. Absolutely, okay. and it's the same thing in South Africa, it's the same thing in Eastern Europe. Uh, mm. Those are low cost producing uh, countries. Yeah, and I guess again, the fact that they for one reason or another, focus their assets on uh, the sort of uh, non-glossy, what mm -hmm. they call uh, non-coated papers helped because they're a big leader in corrugated, which is the two boards with the waffle in between, which is obviously what gets used in the Amazon type boxes we were referring to earlier. Absolutely. And then also the craft paper, the boxing and all the related stuff. They specifically steered away for one reason or another from the coated wood free, which is the glossy magazine stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Lucky, and yeah, it was a good call, mm. ultimately. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we have been seeing is that craft liner prices, that it, those are the prices that are really important to Mondi, has come under some pressure lately, yeah. um, probably because of weaker uh, manufacturing PMIs and, and services PMIs in, in the US and Europe. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, would that be a long term impact or would craft liner prices kind of stay at these levels, maybe stabilize? Uh, we kind of think, yeah, I mean, the pressure has been there, the share price has adjusted, and we'll so look forward to it improving. what you're saying is that share price slide at the tail end might be a function of that in part, as well as a little bit of market uh, jitters in yeah, recent times. Yeah, the, the, the market jitters combined with the expensive valuation combined with craft liner prices uh, yeah. coming off. Okay, but sounds as though you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt and go with what? Yeah, I mean, long term, this is a solid company. Mm. The management team is really experienced. As I mentioned, that return on capital employee is much better than mm. the rest of the market. Plus the strong euro earnings, the currency issues working for them. So that's got to be a positive going forward as well. And the recent weakness in the share price. Yeah, okay, good. So we're going to be hot on Monday. Good.